Hello and welcome to the very first video of Watch Talk. Let me first start by saying that I am uh, in no way a professional or qualified watchmaker in any way, shape or form. I'm not an engineer, I am just simply someone who has a passion and an interest in everything horology and just about, just about anything mechanical for that matter. Uh, I've been interested in watches and mechanical things since, you know, very young age, since the age of about 8 or 10. Um, so I just thought I'd put together this channel just to show, you know, the average person, if they have an interest in mechanical watches, mechanical things, that, you know, it's okay to have a crack. You know, there are a lot of resources out there available for people to, you know, pull a watch apart and the tools that you need are can be quite basic and inexpensive. And if, if you have, like I said, if you have a passion for watches and, and have half an idea, all you need is half an idea of, uh, of, of how mechanical things work or, or, or logic for that matter, you can do this. You know, I, I probably know just about enough to be dangerous, I reckon. Um, so... Um, I just want to just want to you know, put it out there, and there are a lot of a lot of videos out there, a lot of books you can read, a lot of resources available out there in the, in YouTube land and in the, in other other forms of uh, media and whatever. To so just have a read, have a look, watch what people do, and you know what, have a crack. Uh, by no way am I um, subscribing to uh, the fact that you should be pulling apart, you know. Your, your prized possession thousand two thousand dollar watch or five hundred dollar watch for that fact if you don't feel confident but you know hopefully i'm going to pull apart a few a few watches a few movements that i've got and to put them back together and um and you know give people some sort of confidence uh, i've been watching people for for many 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 years and um you know opened the backs of, of many watches but just been too you know reluctant to you know delve in and pull things apart but you know the more you watch I suppose the more confidence you get and get yourself in the hands on a couple of cheap movements like these cheap movements like this and have a crack you know you'll be fine but I must say this movement here just a cheap you know 20 odd dollar Aussie dollar movement I must say, automatic, automatic movement, date, function, but I must say, if do not make this your, your first watch to, to pull apart. I'll go through that a little bit later on, but that was an absolute nightmare. These $20 movements are not designed to be pulled apart and worked upon and put back together. These are designed when they break down, you throw them in the bin and buy yourself another one. Um, haven't had the pleasure yet. In ripping this one apart this one's uh, again another cheap movement day date and um, automatic winding as well haven't had a chance to pull that one apart but um, we see how we go we'll, uh, we'll give it a crack at some stage um, so basically the content of, of this channel is going to be um, around you know, disassembly and um, uh, hopefully the reassembly of, of watches by by the average person um, you know, it's going to test your, uh, your patience, that's for sure. And, um, you know, build up a little bit of a skill set in, in being very, very, you know, delicate with your hands. Um, but again, I just want to show people that anybody with, with half an idea and, and, and a lot of passion can, can get through this. Uh, I'll just want to just this first video, I just want to show, um, you know, my, my little setup. It's nothing, it's nothing fantastic. You can do this just, you know, from um, from whatever means you have. Um, you know, you can work on your kitchen table or your um, your dining room table, or have a little dedicated table. And um, my my setup, as you can see here, is nothing extravagant at all. I'm actually in the laundry, hence why you can probably hear a bit of echo. Um, I am. Um, I've only got a little bit of space to work on. Um, I've got about, I think it's about, let me just get my measuring tape out, I think about 80 odd centimetres. Yeah, I've got about 84, 84 centimetres of width here. So in any case, I'd, I'd just be able to get a really, really small table. So I looked around online and sort of scouted the IKEA um, online 
catalogued and found a little table there that I thought, oh yeah, that'll be right. Got a couple of drawers in it. It's about the right size. It'll do. So as we all do, you know, we, we go down to um to IKEA and uh, you know they've got they they've got a beautiful uh, method of making you walk through the whole store to find one item. And I mean, we went through, looked at the table. wasn't too impressed. It was really small, short. I mean, the average table probably sits at about I don't know how, how average table is probably about I don't know. 75 centimeters tall where you know if, if you read around you know the, the internet and that, that they say that a, a, um, a workbench for um for watchmaking should be about the 90 95 odd centimeters tall that way that you're not sort of hunching over and so as you had to be walking through the store and after i saw the table and wasn't too impressed we just walked past this area it was, i can't remember it was in the the cupboard or the laundry section or wherever it was and my wife pointed out this cupboard here and I, she goes, well, what about this? And I'll just pull back and I'll show you. As you can see, I am in the laundry. <laughs> um, uh, it's just a cupboard. I'll just pull this chair out. It's just it's just a cupboard. It's nothing special. Um, and she goes, what about that? And I said, a cupboard? I mean, that's a bit weird. She goes, oh, look, you know, it's got doors on it at least. So, you know, if you want to put your stuff away, you know, you'll be all right. Um, but when I measured it, it was it was it was okay. But and I'll just measure it now and let you know how deep it is. It wasn't as deep as I would otherwise like. Let me just measure it. It's only about 40 odd centimeters, 40 odd centimeters deep. This way. It sort of it sort of ends uh, with my finger. Oops, sorry for knocking you around. It sort of ends about here. So I thought 40 centimeters deep is probably not going to be big enough for me to do what I want. But then I thought, well, I've you know, looked in the garage and I've got lots of bits and pieces floating around, and I've got this piece of um, had this piece of white melamine, which you know I bought for some shelving. Had an off cut. I thought, oh, gee, I can make a new top and make it a little bit bigger just to take up the um, take up the the slack and make it a bit deeper and, and bring it in line with the um, with the sink. As you can see, it's it's in line. It looks sort of you know. Um, you know, it's, it's in line with that, so it looks a bit more prettier than that. So I did that, brought it home, cut up this little piece here, um, put a little bit of, I uh, found some beading in the garage, um, cut some of that up, put the beading all the way around so things don't roll off the desk as, as um, or the bench, as things tend to do, and painted it up, siliconed it all the way, whoops, siliconed it all the way around, you know, and it, it's, it's cool, it's great, you know. And then I am, um, because of the, the um, I'll just move some stuff out of the way here. I've got some paperwork and rubbish. I've got the sink here. I'll just uh, get this out of there. I've got the sink there. And look at that. That is um, um, that is the number one magnet of losing stuff is that sinkhole. So apart from putting the plug in there, which I, I do as well because I just get very nervous. I thought, well, that's a waste of space there. So I... I didn't have any more timber lying around the garage, so I spoke to my brother-in-law, who's a cabinet maker, and I said, "You got any, got any offcuts lying around? Can you cut me a piece this by that and notch out, notch out a little piece here for the um, the drain for the washing machine?" And so him, being the ultimate professional, you know, cut me up this nice shiny piece of of of, uh, of, of uh, timber here and then put a little ha door handle on it, just so I've got somewhere to grip on. So that there just gives me a bit of extra, a bit of extra working space. So that works a real, a real treat. And you know, if anything falls, it's going to fall on here and probably bounce on the ground, and I'll never find it again on this floor. I'm lucky it's not carpet because that would be an absolute nightmare to find parts. Um, so that's my setup. It's nothing really special. I'll just show you. I'll do a, I'll do the next video based on just you know some tools and that. Just can see just a little bit of a. Just so it's not a boring white table for you to look at while I gas bag a bit. Um, but it just, I just come out a bit. I just, it's just got all my stuff in it. It's just, you don't realise how much stuff you've actually got. Um, you don't need this much stuff by, by any means. I've just been collecting, I just love tools and stuff. I've just been collecting stuff over the years and, you know, you sort of build up this, build up that. And admittedly, I have bought a, a lot more stuff of late. But I've got everything labelled in here and I'll go through that probably in the, in the next video just just thought I'd just show you my setup just to just to show people that you don't really need to spend that much money I mean this 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 cupboard here from Ikea um let me just stand back here a bit of view of it it was about um you know hundred hundred dollars Aussie hundred and ten dollars Aussie and like anything in Ikea 
and um, just put it back there. Like anything in IKEA, it takes about you know half an hour to put together, and it, it's great. It's fine. It, it it does exactly what I need it to do. It's a nice little space. It's um, let me just measure it all up just so you've got some idea. It's about eighty. Well, the inside. Let me just the inside. So from well, let's grab your beard. Pretty good. Seasick. Just from the inside of that beading to there, and from the from the back to the front. I'll just measure that up for you, just so you know. I, I would add. Let me just measure it. About eighty-three centimeters wide by about fifty-five centimeters deep. And the depth is 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 great. And you can have uh, your light on there. I'll just pull you back a bit now. Um, uh, just got have a nice LED light there. And the depth the depth fifty-five is 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 fine. It's um it's great. Don't need any more than that. Um, I mean, more space is also uh, you know, obviously good. Uh, 83 centimeters wide. You know, would have been nice if it was a little bit wider. Um, sometimes when you sit and you, you know, you've got your elbows out, you know, meh, it is what it is. I'm just restricted on space. It would be nice. I know if you guys have got professional wear desks out there or roll top, roll top desks. So, um, that that would have been the ultimate. Therefore, you can just roll it down, shut it away, and leave your stuff in there where me because this is the the laundry it is a working room i normally put things away in these little containers at the end of the day when i'm finished you know playing and that and i'll put everything in the cupboard so we can use this as a as a utility bench i suppose so that's just just something just something for you to ponder over that you don't need to go spend a whole heap of money like i said you can you can always do this on the on the dining room table or kitchen tops kitchen table um, if you like, just you know, a nice little soft mat. This is a little, nice little soft mat, just in case things, you know, screws tends to bounce and end up in the in the black hole, where you'll never find it. But um, so something like this is something simple, relatively inexpensive, you know, and um, it does it does the job. So um, that's the first video. And um, the next video, I'll go through some of these tools and what you know what you probably need. I mean. And to get started, and most of you have probably, well, whoever's watching this has probably got most of this stuff anyway. Um, so the next next video, I'll, I'll show you what tools that I've got and I use, and um, we'll um, we'll move along. So thanks very much for watching. Um, if you if you like, you can like it if you like. If you want, if you don't, don't. And um, subscribe if you like, and um, hopefully we can put a few more videos together and um, see how we go. Thanks for watching.